Hello and welcome. So I've got a really cool integral for you guys today and we're actually going to solve this totally real valued integral by using contour integration over the complex plane. And so in order to do this method, there's two things we need to set up first, okay? And the first is we need to rewrite this integral. So I'm going to show you just a totally random other integral and then we're going to kind of connect the two and I'll show you maybe why this integral is also important. So if we wanted to solve this integral, then one way to do this integral would be to do negative infinity to infinity of cosine of x plus i sine of x, like so. And that's just because of Euler's relation where e to the i x equals cosine of x plus i sine of x, right? Just by the properties of integrals, we can sort of rewrite this uh, again as two different integrals instead of one. So we can have the negative infinity to infinity of the cosine of x over x squared plus 1 dx. And then we can add the i times the integral from negative infinity to infinity of sine of x over x squared plus 1 dx. And so the reason I've written this integral out is because it sort of tells us something about our integral, right? So what does it say? Well, it tells us that this integral that we're focused on is actually equal to the real part of the integral that I wrote for you of e to the i x over x squared plus one. So actually these two integrals are totally equivalent because we know that this integral is totally real valued. And we also know that this integral is totally real valued except it's being multiplied by an i which is outside of the integral. So if you wanted to take the real part of this integral well, it's just gonna be the integral that's not multiplied by i, so this guy right here. Okay, so that's the first sort of setup situation there. And now let me show you why we had to rewrite the integral like that. And so to do that, I'll draw a nice diagram of the complex plane here. So this is going to be the imaginary axis. This is going to be the real axis like so. And so where does our, I guess, goal integral, right? the re of e to the i x over x squared plus one, well, where does that lie on the complex plane? Well, it's just a real number, right? Because we're taking the real answer to that integral. So it's just gonna be a line across the real axis like so. And we can say that that line goes from r to negative r. And eventually we'll say that r approaches infinity and negative r approaches negative infinity. And so now we kind of want to draw a semicircle so from r to negative r, and I'll show you why we do this in a second. So we've kind of just drawn a contour in the complex plane, a contour being a line across numbers in the complex world. So we have two sort of curves that combine into one. We'll call this gamma r, so this is a curve along the real numbers. Then we'll call the sort of semicircle connecting r and negative r gamma c to signify that that's a curve um, gamma along the curve of the semicircle and we'll call that C, right? And so we're going to make a quick distinction here that gamma itself is going to equal gamma C plus gamma R. And so basically all we're saying is that if you took gamma R and you added gamma C, you'd have a new closed curve gamma. And so then it would just go from negative R across this real axis, across the semicircle like so, back to negative R, across gamma R and across gamma C. So now we have a closed curve gamma, which is the sum of these two pieces that we've created in the complex plane. And so now what we wanna do is we want to use this to our advantage. So our goal is still the real part of negative infinity to infinity of e to the i x, over x squared plus one like so. Except now we kind of can rewrite it in terms of contour integrals over these new curves we've created. So we can say this is the same thing as the contour integral over the entire closed curve of that same integrand like so. And then we can subtract the curved part, right? So gamma curve, gamma c, e to the i x over x squared plus one dx. And so this is going to be our goal, right? And now we can substitute this pretty difficult, you know, uh, integral as two contour integrals that maybe aren't so hard. And you might be able to see why this equation works, right? Because of this equation right here. So this integral itself is actually going to be the contour integral over gamma r. 
So if we want gamma r, just this blue line, right? We could take the entire curve that includes the blue and purple. And then if we subtracted the curved portion, which we are doing right here, it would just give us gamma r left. And so that's the idea behind the method. And so there's a pretty important distinction to make here when it comes to gamma c. And this is actually why we rewrote the integral in terms of e instead of cosine. And that's that this integral is going to equal zero as r approaches infinity. And so why is this? Well, the e to the i x function, if x is a really, really large complex number, or I'll say purely imaginary number, so for example, if x was 1000i, then you would be left with e to the i times i times 1000. And of course, i times i is negative one. So in reality, you would have one over e to the 1000. So basically, all that is saying is the higher the imaginary number that you plug into the e to the i x, the lower real number that function spits out. And that's actually what we want because we don't want to solve for this integral because sometimes it's pretty difficult to do that contour integral. But luckily, because e to the i x decreases along this curve, so remember, we're focusing on the case when r is approaching infinity. So you can think of this radius as increasing and increasing and increasing. So eventually this radius gets big enough where e to the i x is so tiny that that whole integral actually goes to zero. You're basically doing a zero over a really large number, x squared plus one. Okay, and so that's why that part actually goes to zero. And so maybe the beauty of this method is starting to become obvious. Now we've substituted this pretty difficult integral for just one contour integral. And we have plenty of methods to solve for this contour integral. So let's go ahead and do that right here. So let me make some room and I'll maybe cut off just a little bit right here of the complex plane. So let's focus on this integral. The integral of e to the i x over x squared plus one dx, and that's going to be the integral over the entire closed curve of the semicircle. And so we're actually gonna focus on what's called the isolated singularities of this integral, and that's just a fancy way of saying where is this integral non-differentiable and if that point is non-differentiable, is there any point nearby that's also non-differentiable? So if you have a lonely non-differentiable point, that's a isolated singularity. And so we have x squared plus one, right? And so where is this actually going to have some isolated singularities? Well, another way to think about this is for what x is x squared plus one equal to zero, right? Because then we would be dividing by zero and of course we can't do that. And actually, this happens at plus i and negative i. And plus i is inside of our semicircle, so that's sort of the isolated singularity we want to worry about here. So to make this integral a little bit easier, we're actually going to factor the denominator. So in other words, we're going to write it in terms of its roots, right? And so here, we already said that the two roots are plus and minus i. So this is another way to write x squared plus one. Okay. So now we're going to use the Cauchy integral theorem. So the Cauchy integral theorem says two pi i times a function evaluated at w equals the integral over a closed contour of f of z, where f of z is differentiable everywhere inside of a closed contour gamma over z minus w dz. And so we're going to use this integral theorem to our advantage here. And so we need to choose a f of z inside of this integrand so that it is differentiable everywhere in our closed contour, which is this semicircle up above. So, well, if we say that f of z were to equal the entire integrand, the problem is that the entire integrand has a bad or it has a isolated singularity at i. So unfortunately that is not differentiable and we can't take the entire integrand to be f of z. But because we've factored it, we can actually choose one of the x minus i or the x plus one and leave the other. And so that way our f of z is going to be totally differentiable everywhere. So e to the i x definitely stays because that's differentiable everywhere. And so this is just going to be over x plus i. And so why is that? Well, again, f of z has to be differentiable everywhere inside of gamma. So x plus i, well, where is that non-differentiable? That's non-differentiable at negative i because then you'd be dividing by zero. But luckily, negative i has nothing to do with this semicircle that we drew here. So this f of z in our case is good in the region enclosed by gamma. 
So then we need to signify what W is from the formula. And so what is W? Well, W is just going to be I, right? And that comes from this piece right here, where X is equivalent to Z. And then we have a minus, which is equivalent to the minus in the formula. And then we have an I, which is equivalent to the W in the formula. So kind of just doing a one-to-one -one correspondence between the Cauchy integral theorem. And so what does that say this integral is then equal to? Well, it says that e to the i x over x squared plus 1 dx equals 2 pi i multiplied by the function that we chose. So e to the i x over x plus i like so. But now we need to evaluate that at w. And in this case, w we chose to be i. So now we can kind of just plug things into our integral and get the answer, right? So this is equal to 2 pi i. And then e to the i x evaluated at i, well, it's just going to be e to the negative 1 because i times i is negative 1. And then we have a i plus i, so 2i like so. So this 2 cancels with this 2, this i cancels with this i, and what are we left with? We're left with a pi over e. And so we have this integral, and if you remember, we distinctly said that this integral that we just found to be pi over e is actually equal to this integral, which is actually equal to the original integral of cosine of x over x squared plus 1. So actually, amazingly, we just found our answer. Negative infinity to infinity of cosine of x over x squared plus 1 dx equals somehow pi over e. And I just think that's incredible because, I mean, I don't think anybody would expect the answer to be two of the most famous constants being divided by each other. And not only that, but we solve for it using contour integration. And a lot of people struggle to see the applications of contour integration. And here's one of them. So, okay, thank you guys for watching. I thought this problem was really interesting. And so I'll continue to do, you know, different videos of different topics I think are cool. So thank you and let me know if you have any questions or any specific recommendations that you want to see.